Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Health Span. Ashwagandha, an ancient Ayurvedic herb, is gaining scientific recognition for its potential health benefits. But does it really work? Today, we'll dive into this recent randomized placebo controlled study that explores the effects of ashwagandha on older adults, particularly on sleep quality and physical performance. The team are from the Government Medical College in Andhra Pradesh, India. This is a preprint and so has not been peer reviewed at this point. So please keep this in mind. Firstly, what is ashwagandha? It is a small evergreen shrub in the nightshade family, which grows in Nepal, India, the Middle East and parts of Africa. Although leaves also have medicinal value, it is the root extract that seems to be used most often and was the intervention in this study. So let's have a look at the study details. The participants were over 65 years old and had a score of seven or more on the frailty assessment and screening tool or FAST. We will look at the FAST test a bit later, but with a score of over seven, a person is considered frail. However, the participants were healthy in that they did not have any outstanding conditions, including cardiovascular or metabolic. There were 19 females and 31 males. They were assigned randomly into the ashwagandha and the placebo groups with 25 in each. The intervention was to take 300 milligrams of ashwagandha root extract in a capsule after a meal twice per day. The study was a randomized, double-blind, two-arm, placebo-controlled, parallel comparative study of efficacy and safety. Key endpoints were frailty and quality of life, and it ran for eight weeks. To measure the endpoint, they used the FAST score, with secondary outcomes being the six-minute walk test, Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index, Mini Mental State Exam, and the short form questionnaire. They also looked at various blood markers, including CRP, cortisol, and creatine kinase. Let's review what these endpoints are. First, FAST, or the Frailty Assessment and Screening Tool. It measures overall frailty, considering factors like nutrition, memory, and mobility. It was developed in India for local requirements. It has a set of 14 questions with a higher score, meaning more frail. A score of seven or above is considered frail and five or above as pre-frail. The other measures are all standard international tests. The six minute walk test is how far a person can walk in six minutes and is a measure of cardiovascular health and endurance. The Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index is a self-reported questionnaire with 19 questions that assesses sleep quality over a one-month time interval. It was developed as a tool for measuring overall sleep quality when studying psychiatric disorders at the University of Pittsburgh. The Mini Mental State Examination is a 30-point questionnaire used clinically and in research to measure cognitive impairment. Scores from 25 to 30 are considered normal. Below that would be cognitively impaired. The SF12 is a survey of patient reported health status and quality of life. It covers topics on physical and mental wellness. The SF12 is a cut down version of the original SF36. So most of these are questionnaire based tools around physical and mental capacity, with the exception of the six minute walk test which is a direct measure of physical capability. Here are the results. The higher score on the FAST test means more frail, so a lower score is better. The ashwagandha group saw a better improvement over the eight weeks, and this was significant to the placebo group. I could not figure out from the paper what the difference between FAST and FAST total was, which was disappointing. For all the other tests, they said that the improvement from baseline for the ashwagandha group had a p-value of less than 0.001, whereas for the placebo group, none were significant. In the discussion section, they go over this data again, but they use a p-value of less than 0.001. I am not clear which value is correct. Similarly, the difference between the groups for all the tests had a p-value of less than 0.001. For the MMSC, a higher score is better, 
and it improved by 18%, meaning less cognitive impairment. In terms of actual numbers, the average at baseline was 20.68, and at eight weeks, 24.40, which is very close to the 25 score considered normal. The SF12 score, also higher being better, and again, there is an improvement with ashwagandha of 8.1%. As mentioned, the six minute walk test is the only physical examination, not based on a questionnaire. It's interesting that this also saw a significant improvement of 19.3%. In the discussion section, the authors do point to previous research in 2015 by a different group, which showed significant increases in muscle mass and strength with ashwagandha root extract. And there was a large improvement in the PSQI, for which lower scores are better, of 40%. This was a drop from 15.44 to 9.24. The authors looked at some of the key markers of inflammation in the blood, specifically cortisol, CRP, and creatinine kinase. The values were the same between groups at baseline, which is to be expected. The next sentence seems to say that they were also similar at week eight, which is the end of the trial. However, they say that there was a significant decrease in the ashwagandha group, but not the placebo. I do not see how this follows. The figures in table two also do not seem to bear this out, as the numbers for both groups did not look significantly different. So I'm not clear what the conclusion is to draw from this. And for the conflicts of interest, the authors declare none. The study was supported by Ixorial Biomed, who do market an ashwagandha supplement. But it looks like all they did was provide this supplement for the study. It is a preprint, and there were some parts that seemed like they needed to be fixed, which I touched on during the video. It has a small sample size, and at eight weeks was not long. The results look very good, so it would be nice to see them replicated in another study. However, it is a randomized placebo-controlled clinical trial that showed ashwagandha significantly improved sleep quality, physical performance, and cognitive function in older adults. These are all areas that I'm interested in, and as ashwagandha has a good safety profile and is reasonably priced, I've decided to give it a try. Please let me know in the comments below if you are taking ashwagandha, and if so, what your experience with it has been. Thank you for your attention. I wish you were well and we'll speak to you again soon.